There are creatures in this world with incredible abilities. What's on your mind, Oliver? Hello, Emma. I was just watching a TV show about birds that can fly at altitudes of 8,000 meters. Imagine the sense of freedom if one could fly so high. I thought it'd be nice if I could easily fly in the sky to relieve stress. Well, it's true that some migratory birds, specifically the demoiselle grain, cross the Himalayas, which stand over 8,000 meters tall, in search of abundant food. But the higher the altitude, the harsher the environment. At 8,000 meters, the average temperature is minus 35 degrees Celsius, and there's only about a third of the oxygen available at ground level. Humans can't survive there without supplemental oxygen. So high altitude places are far from comfortable. When you put it that way, it does seem less appealing. The lack of oxygen and extreme cold make it hard just to breathe. But then, how do birds like the bar-headed goose manage to fly at such high altitudes without suffering from oxygen deprivation? If humans were at the summit of Mount Everest, they'd start to suffer from oxygen deprivation even if they were just standing still. So, how can birds not only survive but fly in those conditions? That's a good question, Oliver. It's known that birds and reptiles have a more efficient respiratory system than humans. That's why birds such as the bar-headed goose can stay active even in places with thin air. That sounds interesting. Can you explain it in more detail? Sure thing. We're discussing why birds can fly comfortably in the thin air of high altitudes. How exactly do the respiratory systems of humans and birds differ? The biggest difference is that birds always have fresh air in their respiratory organs, unlike humans. Even if you say that, I don't quite understand. Humans also exhale the air after absorbing the oxygen and should always be inhaling fresh air, right? Let me explain it step by step. First, let's look at the respiratory system of mammals, including humans. Inside the lungs of mammals, there exists a large number of small balloon-like organs called alveoli. The alveoli are connected to capillaries and their role is to transfer the oxygen we inhale into the bloodstream. So, the alveoli extract oxygen from the air. Correct. The act of inhaling and exhaling is due to the expansion and contraction of the alveoli. So, does that mean the alveoli have muscles that allow them to expand and contract? No. The alveoli themselves don't have muscles. The diaphragm, a sheet-like muscle located beneath the lungs, is mainly responsible for this. When the diaphragm descends, the volume the lungs occupy increases, causing the alveoli to expand. When the diaphragm rises, the opposite happens and the alveoli contract. So, with the help of the diaphragm, the alveoli perform two functions: exhaling and inhaling air and absorbing oxygen. Exactly. On the other hand, birds have constructed their respiratory system differently from mammals. They assign these two functions to different organs. More specifically, they use a bag called the air sac for inhaling and exhaling air and a tube called the parabronchus for oxygen absorption. So, in mammals where the alveoli handle both functions, in birds these functions are split between the air sac and the parabronchus. Yes, and because of this division, birds can take in a lot of fresh air rich in oxygen. What does that mean? In humans, the lungs, which are the organs that take in oxygen, inflate and deflate to allow the intake and release of air. However, when the lungs deflate, they can't expel all the air. Therefore, even when the lungs inflate and take in fresh air, it mixes with the stale air that was originally left in the lungs. As a result, the oxygen concentration becomes lower compared to completely fresh air. On the other hand, in birds, there's a system that allows fresh air to always flow in one direction through a series of tubes and air sacs, ensuring efficient oxygen intake. This means that the stale air, which has already been used for oxygen exchange, doesn't come into contact with areas for oxygen intake, so birds can take in oxygen more efficiently. So, in humans, since the direction of airflow is opposite during inhalation and exhalation, the used air with a lower oxygen concentration mixes with fresh air. In contrast, birds have evolved a mechanism where the organs for air exchange and oxygen extraction are separate. This allows only fresh air to be used for oxygen extraction. The bird's respiratory system is indeed a well thought out and efficient mechanism. Exactly. Furthermore, there's another major advantage to the bird's respiratory system. The organ that takes in air doesn't inflate or deflate, allowing the blood air barrier through which oxygen passes when transported from air to blood to be thin. In mammals, since the alveoli expand and contract, the blood air barrier needs to be thick and sturdy. In birds, the tubes responsible for oxygen exchange don't expand or contract, allowing the blood air barrier to be thinner. So, in the bird's respiratory system because there's less strain on the blood air barrier, it can afford to be thin. But what advantages does a thinner blood air barrier bring? Let me break it down. To efficiently transfer oxygen to the blood, direct contact with air would be ideal. But if we did that, harmful substances, including pathogens, might also enter the bloodstream. So, we have the blood air barrier as filter to ensure safe oxygen intake. This barrier isn't designed to facilitate oxygen transfer. In fact, from an efficiency standpoint, it's somewhat of an obstacle. Thus, with birds having a thinner blood air barrier, their oxygen transfer efficiency is enhanced. Although it's called a blood air barrier, 
its role isn't to actively aid in oxygen transfer, but can be an obstacle instead. So a thinner barrier in birds enhances oxygen intake efficiency. Exactly. To sum it up, while humans rely on alveoli for both air exchange and oxygen extraction, birds use a system of air sacs and tubes. This separation allows birds to efficiently extract oxygen from fresh air, enhancing their overall oxygen extraction capability. This is why birds can fly effortlessly even in higher altitudes where oxygen is sparse. Birds can function in places like altitudes of 8,000 meters, where only a third of the ground-level oxygen is present because their respiratory system is more efficient than that of humans. I never realized that birds had a respiratory system that was more advanced than ours. I'm glad you understand. But I have a question. How were birds able to develop such an efficient breathing method? Considering that mammals appeared later on, I'd naturally think that they'd have a more efficient breathing method than birds. That's a good question, Oliver. The reason birds developed such an efficient breathing method is connected to the environment in which the ancestors of birds, the dinosaurs, flourished. How so? Let me explain step by step. It's common knowledge that dinosaurs once dominated the Earth, but the reasons behind their prolonged dominance remain a significant mystery in evolutionary biology. One of the more credible theories posits that their superior respiratory system played a role. This is because the era when dinosaurs roamed the Earth was likely a period when efficient breathing was crucial, more so than today. Why was the respiratory ability more critical during the time of the dinosaurs? It's because the environment was different from today's. While today's oxygen concentration hovers around 21 during the time of the dinosaurs, it was closer to 15. And with a reduced oxygen concentration, there was an increased need for efficient oxygen intake. So, an environment with lower oxygen levels demanded a superior respiratory system. Exactly. And some of these dinosaurs had massive sizes exceeding 30 meters. This size meant that they needed more oxygen to support their massive bodies. In such a challenging environment, dinosaurs developed a highly efficient respiratory system over time. This respiratory advantage was then passed down to their descendants, the birds. That's why birds have a respiratory system that's considered more efficient than mammals. I see. So birds inherited the efficient respiratory system developed by dinosaurs in an oxygen-poor environment? Precisely. I must admit, I am a bit envious of the ability to breathe in oxygen efficiently. It seems like if breathing was easier, I wouldn't feel out of breath after just a bit of exercise. It would have been nice if humans had the same respiratory system as birds. Well, it's true that if humans had the respiratory system of birds, we might be able to exercise more easily. But having the same respiratory system as birds isn't necessarily all advantages. What do you mean? Breathing is done to take in oxygen, so I feel like the efficient oxygen absorption of bird respiration is a superior version of mammalian respiration. Actually, it's known that the mammalian respiratory system has strengths that birds don't have. And that is, the blood-air barrier is thick, and it has a high resistance to harmful substances. To recap, mammalian alveoli have evolved to be thick to withstand expansion and contraction. This thickness may hinder the movement of oxygen, but it strengthens the original role of the blood-air barrier, which is to prevent the intrusion of harmful substances. So, a thick blood-air barrier decreases the efficiency of oxygen intake, but it enhances the ability to filter out harmful substances Exactly. Currently on Earth, mostly due to coal-fired power generation, large-scale health damage is occurring due to air pollution. Specifically, according to calculations by the WHO, as of 2016, the lives of four, two million people are taken each year due to air pollution. Therefore, if the human respiratory system was like that of birds, which easily allows the intrusion of harmful substances, it's likely that even more lives would have been lost to air pollution. Even with our current respiratory system, millions of people lose their lives each year. So, if humans had the bird's respiratory system, which has low resistance to harmful substances, it could have been an even bigger disaster. Yes, yes. But then, wouldn't wild birds living in nature be directly affected by air pollution? I've always had the impression that humans are the ones suffering from air pollution, but could it be that wild animals are suffering more? That's not well understood at this stage, and there's a good chance that there are animals whose health is being harmed by polluted air. However, in humans, the main causes of death from air pollution are heart disease, stroke, and lung cancer. These diseases do not occur immediately after inhaling polluted air, so wild animals with shorter lifespans than humans are thought to suffer relatively less damage. Therefore, the impact of air pollution on wild animals has not been considered a major issue and has not been studied much. If air pollution isn't causing significant harm to innocent wild animals, that's a silver lining in a very dark cloud. Indeed. Well, I think that's enough for now. Thanks, Emma. This was interesting. As I explained earlier, the bird's respiratory system, in exchange for efficient oxygen absorption, is prone to allowing the intrusion of harmful substances. And actually, this low resistance to harmful substances is thought to be one of the possible causes of dinosaur extinction. What do you mean? Dinosaurs are believed to have become extinct due to a large meteorite impact. 
This is often discussed in the context of the extinction of dinosaurs due to environmental changes such as rapid cooling and food shortages as a result of dust generated by the meteorite blocking sunlight. However, some scientists believe that the dust itself generated by the meteorite may have entered the dinosaur's respiratory system and taken their lives. So the dust itself, stirred up by the meteorite impact, might have been one of the factors that led to the extinction of dinosaurs, which had weak respiratory systems. Yes, this implies that our mammalian ancestors, who had a strong resistance to dust in exchange for oxygen absorption efficiency, may have survived. Generally, the mammalian system is considered inferior to the avian respiratory system and is often referred to as a failure of evolution. But in terms of resistance to foreign substances in the air, mammals could be said to be superior. In short, what I'm trying to say is that there's not much that's a complete upgrade in biology. The characteristics of organisms are the result of adapting to the environment over an incredibly long period of time. Exactly. Well, I think we'll end it here for now. Thanks for watching till the end. We're explaining interesting scientific stories like this, so feel free to come back if you're interested. It would be encouraging if you subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up. Well then, thank you so much for watching.